On April 10, 1912, a historic moment unfolded as the world's largest and most opulent ship, the Titanic, prepared for its inaugural voyage. The anticipation was palpable, with no inkling of the impending storm that lay ahead. On board were 1,500 passengers, and a multitude of onlookers gathered on the dock to witness the Titanic embark on its maiden journey. Neither the passengers bidding farewell nor the crowds watching from afar could foresee that this majestic vessel would later become synonymous with tragedy. The Titanic stood tall, unbeknownst to all, about to embark on a fateful voyage marred by a series of errors and oversights. In this video, we'll explore six critical mistakes made during the construction and operation of the Titanic, which, if avoided, could have secured its place in history for its success rather than its catastrophic end. Even Captain Smith, with his 40 years of experience, failed to foresee the impending disaster. The Titanic's operating company, the White Star Line, boasting experience with 107 other ships, also missed crucial details. Even the Titanic's manufacturer, Harland & Wolf, a company with over 500 ship constructions under its belt before the Titanic, failed to identify these critical flaws. The Titanic's construction began in 1907, and after three years of tireless work by 2,000 laborers, the ship was ready for its maiden voyage. However, before the Titanic could set sail, it needed to undergo a crucial testing phase. The people behind the Titanic project had unwavering confidence until the ship successfully completed this initial test, boldly claiming that they had created an unsinkable vessel. The Titanic's maiden journey was scheduled to commence from the city of Southampton in England on April 10th, marking the beginning of a remarkable but ultimately tragic chapter in maritime history. In the American city of New York, ticket prices for the Titanic's voyage were set at $30 for economy class and $150 for first class. This pricing strategy led to the booking of several tickets, and the day finally arrived when the Titanic was poised for its maiden voyage. Precisely at noon, the Titanic embarked on its journey and it didn't take long for the ship's initial errors to become apparent. Captain Smith had been given a strict deadline by the ship's owner. They had to reach New York by April 17th. This pressure led Captain Smith to maintain high speeds from the outset, marking the first of his mistakes. The urgency to reach New York on time on the Titanic's inaugural voyage was paramount to preserve the ship's reputation. Every vehicle, whether a machine or a ship, adheres to specific operating procedures, including speed limits. This aspect was overlooked in the Titanic's early journey, as it sailed away from the port, leaving behind a vast, open sea with nothing else in sight. As three days passed since Titanic's departure, with only a slight apprehension noticeable in France and Ireland, the ship continued its course towards New York. One fateful night, another ship, a few hours ahead of the Titanic, sent a wireless warning about icebergs in the Titanic's path, which experts believed was relayed at least six times. However, due to the wireless operator's negligence, these crucial warnings went unheeded. This oversight constituted the second mistake of the Titanic, as it was the flagship of its line, carrying many VIP passengers. Most of the crew's attention was focused on serving the first-class passengers, and had these warnings been taken seriously, the outcome might have been drastically different. The ship's excessive speed compounded the issue, and an essential warning went unnoticed. The Titanic was swiftly approaching an ice field, yet it could still have been saved. The ship's telegraph operators were ready to transmit warnings, but crucially lacked the ability to see distant objects, which was a significant missing piece of equipment. Indeed, the lookouts were vigilant but their view of the approaching iceberg was obscured by its relatively short distance, marking the Titanic's third error. The captain received word of the iceberg as the ship's lookout reported, yesterday, there was an iceberg the size of a football field ahead, but now it's alarmingly close. This constituted the fourth mistake since the Atlantic Ocean often presents obstacles that large ships can typically handle. Perhaps the captain assumed as much, for upon hearing about the obstacle, he promptly ordered the engines to be halted and the Titanic's course altered. Unfortunately, the decision was made too late to prevent disaster. The iceberg made contact with the Titanic, causing structural damage, which was aggravated by the vessel's use of cast iron instead of steel. Cast iron is more brittle than steel, 
explaining why the iceberg's pressure caused the ship's hull to rupture, confirming Captain Smith's apprehensions as the fifth mistake. The collision with an iceberg the size of a football field resulted in the ship taking on water, setting off a state of alarm among passengers and the ship's owner, Joseph Bruce Ismay. Though Titanic was designed to remain afloat even with three flooded compartments, tragedy struck as the water penetrated the fourth compartment, rendering the situation uncontrollable. Titanic was inexorably sinking into the ocean. The focus shifted from saving the ship to preserving the lives of its passengers. The captain issued urgent distress signals via radio, awaiting assistance. A plan was devised to transfer passengers to lifeboats, but this is where the sixth mistake emerged. Out of a total of 32 lifeboats, only 20 were available. This error became evident as priority was given to first-class passengers, favoring the wealthier passengers over others. In this dire situation, lives were lost unnecessarily. At 1245, the first lifeboat was lowered into the sea, but another mishap occurred during the boarding process, with a bias towards prioritizing first-class passengers. This practice further reduced the chances of saving human lives. Then, at 218, Due to a short circuit, all of the Titanic's lights went out, and in the next instant, the ship fractured and split into two sections. Titanic had two more hours before it entirely succumbed to the sea. Tragically, within those 40 minutes, approximately 1,500 people perished in the frigid waters of the Atlantic Ocean. It's essential to note that the water temperature at that time was minus 2 degrees Celsius, meaning that even if passengers had entered the cold water, survival was nearly impossible, as humans cannot endure such low temperatures for more than 30 minutes. There are accounts of heroic acts and stories of survival, including individuals who escaped from the sinking ship, some of whom did not possess tickets. However, a significant portion of the casualties were women and children. The captain, who tirelessly worked to save lives throughout, met his fate as the last person aboard Titanic, going down with the ship. I hope you found this video informative, and I look forward to sharing more fascinating content with you in the future.